BP's stock falling to its lowest level by the most in 18 years in London. Two years ago, recapping here, BP said it could handle an oil spill 10 times larger than the disaster in the Gulf. In its statement at that time, it came in a worst case scenario outline that BP put in an application to drill in the Gulf. BP was asking the U.S. Minerals Management Service for permission to drill an exploratory well about 60 miles away from where the Deepwater Horizon rig blew up. The company said it was prepared for a blowout that could spill 250,000 barrels of oil a day. Now the government agency says the disaster raises questions about the oil industry's ability to respond and new safety rules will have to be implemented. We do have all the angles covered for you on BP. Lizzie O'Leary is in Port Fouchon, Louisiana. Adam Johnson is in Houston, Texas, where cleanup efforts are being coordinated. Lizzie, we start with you in the Gulf of Mexico. BP trying yet another method to cap the spill, but still four days away? Could be four days away, Deirdre. So what they're doing after the top kill failed is essentially trying to use a smaller containment dome over the wellhead. This won't plug the leak, but they hope it will contain the oil that's continuing to gush into the Gulf. And essentially, what they'll have to do is sever some of the damaged pipe near the top of the blowout preventer, cut that off with industrial strength drills, or diamond drills, essentially, and then lower this small cap on top of the riser. This may not work in the first try. They recognize that. So they've got this equipment positioned down there with remotely operated vehicles, and these things are the size of pickup trucks. They're enormous. Then to try to to move this containment top over the wellhead. But, of course, one of the things that's going on here is the flow of oil may have to increase up to 20% before they can actually get this thing capped once they cut that damaged pipe, Deirdre. Now, Lizzie, you flew out with the Coast Guard over the site itself. What did you see? Well, we flew out over the coast of Louisiana, out over the rig. It's about 50 miles offshore. And the thing I should tell you is once you get about 15 miles offshore, you can really see the oil. The slick is enormous, coming up in all sorts of different colors because the underwater currents are pushing it around before it even gets to the surface. And the smell, Deirdre, is unmistakable. You get about 20 miles out from the rig. The smell just fills the airplane. We were about 1,500 feet up. Over the rig itself, you can see a series of ships, basically millions and millions of dollars of equipment, the drill ships there for those relief wells, and then all the other ships that are trying to supply this containment operation that they're putting underway right now, Deirdre. Lizzie, thanks. And if Lizzie could smell that oil from 1,500 feet up, but no surprise that workers on the ground are getting sick. While BP is not just trying to stop that oil leak, it's also fighting for its own survival. Adam Johnson joins us now from Houston, Texas with a little bit more on that angle of the story. Adam? Yeah, well, Deirdre, if, uh, if BP actually stands for British Petroleum, you almost wonder, or big problem, you almost wonder if the ticker ought to be MP, as in massive problem. The stock is down 13% this morning. That's on the heels of already being down 26% year to date. Now, the real question is, can BP survive if it's really as bad as it would seem. In other words, if they can't plug this thing fairly soon, the costs just continue to escalate. And how long will it go? Now, on the on the one side, they do have cash, about seven billion in cash. They've got another 27 billion in cash flow. They have access to a credit line of about 15 billion. But on the other hand, you know, something's got to give. They're paying out 10 billion dollars in dividends. Can they maintain the dividend? And of course, their capex budget, the amount of money they spend actually drill, that's 20 billion. Can they continue to do that? And then, of course, the bigger question: Can they really survive? So thought really turns towards what happens at this point. Would someone come in like an Exxon, like a Shell? You know, at this point, BP's market cap has dropped so low, it's literally less than half of Exxon. So the question is, can they go as an ongoing concern? Can they survive, Deirdre?